I thank you, dear friends. First of all, I'd also like to thank all the international organizations like the United Nations, Amnesty International, FIDH, the uh, OMCT, Frontline Defender, and many other organizations who adopted me during my many periods of imprisonment when I was a prisoner of opinion and who have always adopted my friends, have all, always, who have also suffered in this way and who have been detained. I'd like to thank uh, the United Nations Organization for Human Rights and I'd like to thank the United Nations who awarded the, the most recent award f for human rights. And I would like to thank the other organizations coming from other cities in the world, like Velmar in German and uh, Frontline in Ireland, who have awarded an award to me as well. I am a descendant of a slave. I am from the servile community of Mauritania that make up 50% of the population in Mauritania who are constrained, that is 20% out of the 50% have been born as property of other men. We were inherited by other people. We were their property. They were their assets. And I am, when I am a free man, and I come from a group of a community that are free men now, but are practically maintained in a situation of sub-citizen. We suffer from discrimination, all different kinds of uh, discrimination, and it's all based on the idea of slavery, 20% of our fellow citizens of my Haritin community are slaves, are, are descendants of slaves, often domestic slaves, and are forced to hard uh, work without rest or salary. Women slaves are not allowed to marry, do not remain virgins beyond their early childhood because in Mauritania there is a code, a black code that governs our country that, it, that cloaks itself with Sharia law that says that the only interpretation of the Quran and of the Prophet Muhammad authorizes the sale of slaves, authorizes the violation of young girls and women, also allows and decrees inequality amongst human beings between black and white people. The Arab Berber population, which is made up of 20% of the population, is a minority but is the dominant group, has founded their way of life based on slavery, has uh, governed according to the precepts of slavery. Slavery is ever present in their life. 20% are of the population are not allowed to have identity papers, and are not allowed to travel, don't know their own parents. They don't know who their fathers and mothers are. This 20% of the population are made up of women and are slaves. There is a state racism that has become institutionalized, that has caused pogroms, purges, bloody, Purges, uh, collective uh, murders, 
murdering of the black population of different groups like Olaf and the Bambala. So there are thousands of people in Senegal and Mali are involved in hanging and murders of those who dare to demonstrate against slavery. Now, with my friends, I founded an organization, IRA, the resurgence of the abolitionist movement in Mauritania, and it was immediately uh, prohibited, and we were imprisoned many times, 27th of April 2012, in a voluntary act of protest against the continuation of slavery and its practices in an act that represents depriving me of my right to think of, to speak freely, I offered publicly and symbolically examples of the black code that justifies racism of slavery, uh, of this code of slavery in Mauritania. And the reaction of the government was to close down the neighborhood that I live in. A, 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 a neighborhood that was marginalized and isolated, encircled by the government, where dozens of cars came in. My home was bombarded, and uh, uh, tear gas and bombs were unleashed on us. The phone was cut off. Internet networks were cut. I was arrested violently. My wife, my children, my neighbors passed out. Many of them were wounded. Many of them lost consciousness. I was imprisoned in, in isolated military barracks, far away, cut off from contact with health care, with lawyers, from my parents, the head of state in his Council of Ministers decreed that, that I was infamous and should be meted out exemplary punishment. And the dominant group of slave supporters spread through the government, to the country, and organized a demonstration to demand that I be hanged. And they promised uh, that, uh, that I would be hanged uh, and that I deserved to die. And the government all convened all the ministers who were accredited in Nakshat that was transmitted on television. And what shocks me when I recall this is that the ambassadors of democratic countries with, did not speak up about freedom of speech or of worship in their own countries. They remained silent. I recall as well that we were isolated and we were kept in difficult living conditions, and there were TV programs that were transmitted talking about how I was going to be hanged. And, they, and I was told not to react. It will be a gift to the government. This is going, and they said on television, we will kill him as like we kill a cat. My wife, my children, we were all watching this. And this violence and this uh, violence is atrocious. The violence inflicted by the dominant class uh, on the more vulnerable group, on, on those who have no power, on those who are uh, uh, unable to defend themselves. The only response by the government 
to the reaction by the United, the international organizations was to enact laws, to ratify all the UN conventions. Because our authorities know that the West and the international community is happy just to see cosmetic changes, that they will not scratch deeper, and that Mauritania will never implement its laws that it enacts laws to please the international community. But these laws have never been uh, put into action. We, the advocates of human rights, those of us who defend the victims of slavery, the widows, the orphans who've lost their husbands, their, their fathers in charnel houses, in violent situations, deserve our help. I have I'm been bombarded with tear gas. I go to prison. Whereas those who go, those who kill people, who have turned children into orphans, who have turned women into widows, who have killed people because they are black, because they are weak, so that they can remove blacks from the country. These people are in high positions. These people are officials. These people deal with uh, the democratic governments in the world, in the Western world. They want uh, the people to create organizations, uh, and they wa the, the government wants to have informers come forward. And they insult me in the national media. They denigrate me. They slander me. And they, they line their pockets thanks to this. Now, I follow these people in international fora. And I say we need another voice. We need a voice to speak up where you say that there is no slavery, there's no ra racism in Mauritania. World Organization Against uh, Slavery has said in its uh, research that Mauritania that has the highest number of slaves in the entire world. It, is, it ranks number one in terms of slavery. And in my own research, we, in my, I have estimated that 20% of the entire po population is made up of slaves, uh, domestic slaves. They can, be, they can be sold. They are castrated. And this is part of the Constitution. The law says that when a child slave is born and he is handsome, it is said that the child should be castrated because when he grows up, women, the wives of the masters or the daughters of the master, may be tempted to have sex with him. And this might lead to a mix of uh, pure blood with the slave's blood. And this is, is on basis of such books that magistrates are trained, and imams as well. And I am still liable to the death penalty. There are three charges against me. I am an activist. But there has been a revolt by my people who have taken to the streets who are resisting repression and torture and sanctions by the police to disperse the demonstrators. But the uh, courts uh, acquitted me because in Mauritania, you cannot be, it, it is not a crime to burn books. But the court put me in prison once again. I was detained and I was, charged with uh, being an apostate with uh, 
uh, uh, with uh, harming the security of the state, many of my friends have also been charged with similar uh, matters. They are intimidating us. They want to push us to capitulate, to go to go into exile. But I refuse. I will stay in the country, and I will fight. 